Mission to start. Thank you. Shotgun. Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoteric and our continuing series of Metal Slug Mania where I do a retrospective on every single mainline Metal Slug game ever made. And I didn't have a huge plan on doing the Game Boy Advance version of Metal Slug Advance, but here we are because you asked for it. Because this is the game that while it is canon just didn't feel like part of the mainline to me. Before you get too far involved though, do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like, subscribe, that notification bell definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, I've got a Patreon link down below as well. But what is on offer for Metal Slug Advance is quite good. This feels like a classic Metal Slug run and gun game with some slight changes to the formula. The first thing you're going to see is the health bar, and that's not usually something you would see in Metal Slug 1 through 7. Having a life is weird. Then you have cards as well. We got a card for bread. All it does is increase your life if you have taken damage, but it's nice to have a bread card in your wallet now and then. But you can see right off the top, this has all the charm and the great animation of a Metal Slug game with a lower resolution because it's running on the Game Boy Advance. I can't say that this looks anywhere near as good as the Metal Slug games on the Neo Geo or a Thomas Wave, but it still looks relatively good for the hardware that the Game Boy Advance had to offer. And as far as the gameplay is concerned, it is near one-to-one -one with the AES and MVS versions of Metal Slug. There are some slight changes and slight changes to the feel of the game. Some of the verticality here feels a little bit more, I guess, vertical for lack of a better term than some of the AES and MVS games. And sometimes the levels have a couple different switchbacks or confusing exits that you really need to hunt for. There's small complaints what's otherwise an excellent game, but we are talking about how good this is compared to everything else. And I would say on the Metal Slug hierarchy, this is a B tier effort, but a really fun B tier effort. It is weird to have a life bar, and when I first started playing this game, I didn't love it because once you run out of life, you have to get pushed back. But the game never really stops you from just continuing as many times as you want, so that's a thing that you can just do. And I would say that the slug control, sometimes you get hung up on the level geometry and you can't really move forward the way you would like to, and I ended up losing my slug pretty quick here. But it's fun to see a mainline entry in the Metal Slug franchise on handheld hardware because we didn't get that much of that. Obviously we got Metal Slug 7 and XX on the PlayStation Portable and Nintendo DS and I did a video of that as well. Check the playlist. But it's fun because I love the Game Boy Advance hardware. I think it does a really good job of replicating the overall art style of Metal Slug. And of course because it was designed by SNK Playmore and they had some experience with the games back when they were just SNK, it has all the great gameplay. Things like Metal Slug 4 we're missing I feel like this looks feels and sounds like a metal slug entry with just some slight changes of the formula but I do love the bosses this is just the first one here where this tank hops around almost like a hedgehog and that's obviously something that happens in the metal slug games a lot of the bosses are designed around crabs or some sort of interesting animal but now that we've gotten through Mission 1, let's remove right on to Mission 2, because this game does a good job of making different levels feel different. With the color palettes, with what's going on, you know, for Mission 2, you hop right into a slug right off the front. So I would say the pacing of this game is really good, is what you'd expect from an SNK developed a Metal Slug game, so that's always great to have. And even though the colors aren't as vibrant or as plentiful as they are on the Neo Geo platforms, they still look really good here. Every once in a while, the game does like to put you in a little bit of a kill zone. Trying to not get hit with a slug as it moves so slowly can be a little bit of a pain in the butt. It feels like the designers were intentionally trying to keep you from getting further, and the diagonal shooting sometimes can really just be a pain in the butt. I've got both inputs on the D-pad held down, but the diagonal can be a little bit inconsistent, unfortunately. But this game is a ton of fun to play, and it's also got a great soundtrack when you're not just listening to Bullets Fly. It's always hard in a Metal Slug game to give you a sense of what it sounds like. But go ahead and listen for like 45 seconds, and I'll come back and show you more of Metal Slug Advance and tell you why it's great. But enjoy!
I mean, the soundtrack is awesome, but that's because some of the songs in it are from original Metal Slug games on the Neo Geo, and while it's perfectly fine to reuse those assets, you're not going to get a completely original soundtrack in the game. What you are going to get is some really nice inventive boss battles like the twins here. You think there's just one tank, there's actually two, and the second one's going to be much harder. Still not the hardest boss in the franchise whatsoever, but I do like what they do with the bosses here. All of the sprite work on those 2D elements looks great, and it looks exactly like you'd expect from a Metal Slug game. And you even get some slight story now and then. It's not a ton. Most of the story in this game is honestly done via details on the cards and or just reading the manual, but you do get some animations here and there, just kind of showing you what's going on just like you did in the original games as well and as we drop into this cavern here the game has a lot of different characters and i love that we have pirate themed characters we have these men in hawk suits and masks there's a lot of charm to be had and that's what i always want out of a metal slug game the gameplay is always good you move left you move right you shoot a bunch of stuff that's always amazing but a metal slug game needs to have that comedy personality to feel like a real entry in the franchise and this one definitely does have it now, there's one thing about Metal Slug Advance that I do not like, and it's a minor complaint, but it is still one. Sometimes the game just prolongs your experience by tricking you into going down the wrong path, which is not an exit whatsoever. Because in this one area here, there's these different offshoots we can take if we run around, and you're not quite getting any visual indication as to where you need to go. You think maybe, okay, I need to go up, because there's a prisoner to rescue here, a POW, and then he has a turkey, so you end up going down. It tricks you into moving down here, and if we keep going to the left, all we're going to end up doing is getting back to the start of the level and having to make that loop all over again. It feels a little bit like it's just extending the playtime, and it is a minor complaint, but it's one that I don't particularly love about the game. And the real exit was, you have to just keep walking right here, maybe seems easy, and you're going to get into a fight with a bunch of bats coming out of a cave. But that POW dropping down tricks you into thinking you should go there to get that turkey, and you end up on a loop going the wrong direction. But again, it's still a ton of fun. That's the only real complaint I have about the game. I don't know that I love the life system versus having just a single hit death for your character, but I understand they were trying to make it a little bit easier, especially for a portable game. You don't need as much challenge as you do in a console variant. And sometimes you just get to jump around with a slug and that is a ton of fun as well. Considering this was released in 2004, it feels like a semi-return to form for the series because there had been some rough patches there with some of the later games on the AES. And I really like Metal Slug 6, but I know not everyone does love it, so this just felt like a real Metal Slug sequel, even though it's not a numbered entry. And again, this boss here, I don't know what type of animal that is. Leave me a comment down below and tell me if you see an animal in here. I kind of see a crab head in that main turret. But again, the boss fights are so inventive on this game. You're jumping around, you're avoiding the lasers, you're avoiding the mines that are coming towards you. There's so much stuff going on screen at once, and there is very little to no slowdown whatsoever. So in a lot of ways, it runs smoother than a Neo Geo Metal Slug game, even if it's not quite as good. Just because even though this might not look as good because the resolution is lower, the Game Boy Advance is definitely a way more powerful system than our beloved Neo Geo ever could imagine being. But it does have some callbacks to the original games. As we come up on this beach here, this feels like an earlier entry in the game. And you can definitely see a lot of the character and charm and graphics being carried forward. And of course, this is reusing some assets. Like that POW there is very similar to the Neo Geo entries, I'm sure. It is probably one-to-one -one identical. I just didn't put them up next to each other. But that's the great thing about Metal Slug Advance. It's just a really good Metal Slug game, and we haven't gotten one of those for a very long time. Hopefully when Tactics comes out, that's going to be a good game, even though it's not the same genre whatsoever. And people keep asking me, will I add that to the series when it comes out? And that is an absolute 100% yes. I am excited to give a chance to that game, even if it isn't a mainline entry. But if this game is just fun. I love collecting the cards. You need to collect all of them to see the true ending, if I remember correctly. But it just has everything you want out of a Metal Slug game. The running gun action is as good as it ever has been. The graphics are great. The levels are good. The soundtrack, while borrowing some things from the original series, is also excellent as well. Like I said, the only complaint I have about this game is that some levels can be maze-like and you're not quite sure exactly where to go. And when you do have a life bar and you need to restart the level if you run out of life, it does feel like it just ever so slightly artificially prolongs the experience, maybe turning, you know, something like a four-hour game more 
into a five hour game. But yeah, I've actually run out of Metal Slug games to talk about. I know I said the series is ending twice, but I kept adding episodes that your guys request. But unless something comes up and tactics releases really soon, this is going to be it for Metal Slug Mania. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Hit like, subscribe, leave me a comment. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.